pan out the way you expected as Mike, Michael Maguire as coach? Um, well, I, I was preparing myself for a few changes, right? And and we heard Gus Gould talk, what, three weeks ago, was it? And he said, be prepared. Like, you're going to be shocked by a couple of uh, couple of guys being um, selected. And, and I think a lot of us were. Um, the, the biggest one for me, and I think for a lot of people, was that Tedesco is not there. And not not because not because of the person that he's been replaced by in Dylan Edwards. I think I think that's not a shock. I think the fact that there was not we didn't hear any news beforehand. You know we didn't hear from James Tedesco coming out and saying, "Oh look, you know I'm I'm going to stand down." Um, which in these cases um, or scenarios, a lot of the time it does happen with a guy that's the incumbent skipper um, may have been afforded the opportunity to come out and say, "Oh look, you know." I'm I'm going to stand down from from state of origin, um, but yeah, that's I think that's the big one. Given given he's been such an integral part of their football side for several years now, and, and being the captain, Kempi, mm. I think that's that's the biggest one. Not seeing uh, Jay Tedesco next to the number one for for New South Wales, but at the same time, the guy replacing him, look, he's been the most consistent fullback. Um, over the past three seasons, there's no doubt about that. So, like, it's it's a it's a fair it's a fair replacement for a guy coming in, um, you know, replacing the guy that was captain. Um, you know, big Jakey Trebojevic, he's been handed the C um, next to his name, and and I look good on him, good on him. He's done wonderfully well for New South Wales in the past, and and such a reliable player. And they're the type of guys that you want as your leader. But outside of that, I think, um, you know, I think I think what they have picked is a side that as individuals are all playing extremely well at the moment, Kempi. Mm. And if you look at if you look at the teams that they're playing for, you know, like they're they're all a part of sides that are doing extremely well at the moment, apart from, I guess, Zach Lomax playing for the Dragons. Um and, you know, you throw Reese Robson in there as well with the Cows, who um, you know, they started the season extremely well, but they've they've really struggled over the past six weeks. But he has certainly been one of their they're better players. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, on the weekend, uh, and it looks, it does look like, at the very least, the starting side, or sorry, the starting forward pack, has been picked on defence. And you go yep. on what's Reese Robson. Mm. I think it's fifty tackles, zero misses on the weekend, or forty nine yep. along those lines. Yeah. Um, I I think that Tedesco was in this unfortunate position where I actually don't think it has anything to do with how well he's playing right now as to why he wasn't selected. Yeah. I think it has just a lot to do with timing. Like sometimes it's just time for a fresh start. You know, it's time for someone else to come in and yep. see how they go. I, 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 I don't see much difference in their form right now, but I would agree with you that obviously Dylan Edwards has been the most consistent over three years. Mm. But like this season, they're very hard to split. They really yeah. are in regards to form. And so it is a really one of those unique positions where I, like I, I couldn't see a world where... I don't know how well Tedesco could have played to force his way into that side. If you know what I'm saying, I yes. don't think it had anything to do with form. Okay. Like he could have played the best in his career. I think it had everything to do with a new direction that Madge is just trying to head in. So, so do you think like he was he really wasn't in Madge's plans at all to play Origin this year? In well, in my opinion, as yeah. in if I was the coach, yes, okay, that's the way I would be thinking. Okay. I, I would be thinking, look, unless. Yeah, unless he was playing really well and my other options were playing really poorly yep. or injured or just average, uh, then obviously I would consider him. But if I was the coach, I would just be looking at, look, back-to-back losses over the last four series. Um, you know, New South Wales have only lost one. I'm a new coach. I have, a, I have a, um, an opportunity to stamp my type of... Like, for example, every time you see new CEOs come into new businesses, yes. regardless of how good the employees are, oftentimes they'll just get cleaned out because it has nothing to do with performance and everything to do with stamping your, your authority is the wrong word, but the yep. way you do things yes. in that, in, in that uh, company. What, what do you reckon that means though for um, Tedesco's representative future? Is that, is that now shut? Is, it, is, it, is that now that's, that chapter's closed for James Tedesco? Because we, as I said earlier, like we haven't heard anything from James himself. Well, you know, like we've heard uh, through you know news articles and reports that he you know congratulated Dylan Edwards on his selection, but like we haven't actually heard from him to say, look, yeah, you know what, like okay, I've I've 
been very fortunate to represent um, New South Wales and Australia for a long period of time, and I thoroughly enjoyed my time there. Now I'm I'm giving that part of my career away, and I'm just going to concentrate on club footy. What what do you think it means now that Dylan Edwards has um, unseated him from that fullback position? Well, well, funnily enough, I think that you actually do bring Tedesco in, but he comes in not as captain. He comes right. in as just a you know another player that's going to do his best in the Origin Arena, and I yeah. think that. Basically, it's Jake Trevojevic's team, but you almost needed to make that kind of, as I said, that fresh start that kind of not sends a message, but lays the platform of like, this is what I'm looking at. Okay. So I do think he can absolutely, like, there's a world where D- Dylan Edwards goes down. Yes. I'd be, I'd pick in Tedesco for yeah, sure. Yeah, well, that's what, that's, what, that's what I'm sort of alluding to. Like, let's say, you know, like touch wood. I know this bloke's wearing a sky blue jersey and we don't like the, at the, the cockroaches at this time of year, but if Dylan Edwards was to go down at any stage throughout this origin period, you know, the, ne- the next man up, the next best fullback for New South Wales is Tedesco. For sure. Yep. So he's got to go back in. Yep. I was just wondering whether he, you know, uh, like from a, from a personal point of view, he's seen this as, well, okay, well, I'm not the first choice fullback anymore. Now I'm just going to close the door on that part of my career and just concentrate on, on club football. Yeah. Like, we do know that he did text. He was the first one to text Dylan Edwards and say congratulations and, and good luck. So yep. that's um, it just shows you the side of Teddy that I don't think you see publicly facing no. of, of all the little things that he does as a leader, mm. you know. Mm. Um, now, we've actually got a message here. Would Queensland ever sack the incumbent test and state captain? Well, Jack, actually, and Smithy, you can speak about this story uh, much more closely, but, you know, 2005, 2006, there were some pretty mm. strong words to some key players in Queensland. Yeah, well, 2006, we were fought, we were facing um, four consecutive series losses in a row. No, no state had ever conceded four series losses ever in in state of origin, and um, I'm pretty sure you know there were some <laughs> there were some fairly honest discussions with a few of our senior players, and and Lockie was a part of that. So he was our skipper um, at the time. Um, I think he, was he was he. Was he our, was he the Kangaroos captain at the time as well? I think he might have well, been. Yeah, two thousand six, he won was. everything. Yeah, no, yeah. he was. Yeah, and um, yeah, he captained Tri Nations at the end of the year. Um, so he 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 was on the chopping block. Mm. So there was a, there was this pressure that was mounting on on some of the senior players, and he was one of them. Um, the other guys, Petro Sevenasiva and, and Steve Price. So if Queensland, if we would have lost that series to New South Wales, which you know we sort of we had that remarkable win in in Melbourne. Um, the famous victory where um, you know, Lockie dives on the loose ball, scores under the post, and Clint Shavosky kicks the goal with you know, a minute and a half to go to win the match. We, you know, like if we if we go down there like this, he could have been gone. Oh, that you know wow. what I mean? Like Darren Lockie could have lost his job as the captain of Queensland. Mm. So it's just in- incredible the way it all sort of panned out in the end. Like he went on to captain Queensland for another what four series wins, I think. It's so. 2007, um, he had a knee injury in 2008, 2009, 10, and 11. Yeah, another four. Yeah, well. Another four series that he went on to, to Captain Queensland consecutively, I might add. So, you know, like how things could have changed if, if that one result went the other way. And, to you know, just to add to it as well, we're talking about 2006 peak Lockyer. Like, you know, oh, yeah. we're not talking Silk. about... A th- you know, Silky. at the end of his career, like where he's fading a little bit, you know, he still had plenty more to offer. So that's that's how close this whole, you know, could be completely different if they had gone a different direction. Yep. Uh, look, we're going to head to a break. After the break, we're obviously going to keep talking about origin. Being Suwali'i named in the centres. What are your thoughts on those two selections and their positions? Yeah, um, well, look, again, two players playing... You know, quite well at the moment. I know Zach Lomax didn't have a greatest game on the weekend. Um, just gone by against the Doggies. Spent 10 minutes in the bin. Um, but Suli, like he's been on fire for the Roosters. Mm. On fire. Um, and I, I think if, if you look at their back line, um, well, let's just go their back five. They, they carry the ball hard and they carry it often. Mm. So I can completely understand what what Madge is going for here like he's got a high work rate back five that just love carrying the football so anytime the ball goes down the other end he's got Edwards he'll take two carries um Toll's like a another front rower 
Crichton runs the ball really well, plus extremely skillful. Sewell Lee is running it like a front row as well. And Lomax is another big body. So he's picked guys there that can really take a lot of pressure off his middle forwards, Kempi. Mm. So they don't have to race back behind the football, you know, for plays, you know, two and three. They know they've got some 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 guys back there that that really enjoy getting back early and carrying the ball. Mm. And, and they make meters too. Like I think Brian Toll, he is he – leading the comp for like tackle breaks and post contact meters. Like he's got to be up there somewhere. Mate, he's he, averaging more than 200 meters in his origin career per game. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's incredible. Eh? It's crazy. It's incredible. So look, there's, you know, I, I actually like it. I think um, if Bradman best was fit, I reckon he would have been in the centers. Okay. And Suli would have been on the wing. Yeah. That's what I reckon would have happened. And and maybe Lomax would have found himself on on one of those spots in the extended bench, yep. Um, in the twenty man squad, but you know Best is injured, um, so Lomax gets his spot there, and he's rewarded for what's been a pretty good start to the season individually for him. You know he, he's had some really good numbers playing on the wing, and it's where he's played the majority of of this season is in that position. So I actually like it. I like it. Um, and I think the Haas pairing too. This is the Haas pairing that that I thought was was going to go the way of the Blues with Hines and Luai. Although there's there's some there's some still a lot of doubt around Nico Hines. Now we heard from Michael Maguire on Monday saying, "Oh look, no, look, we're working closely with the Sharks medical staff, and you know he's had his scans and all that sort of stuff, and it all looks great." He sat out training today. Yeah, so we've just yes, yeah we've just got some some news that sort of come across the desk and you know relatively um, fresh news that he actually didn't train today. Mm. So for me, like that's a concern. I, I remember as a coach, I, I really at this level you, you need particularly your key players, particularly your key players. You need them ready to go on training. Mm. You need them ready to go on training. Like this is a new halves pairing. Nico Hines has never played seven for New South Wales. Um, he's got a lot of combinations that he needs to build in a short space of time. We are now Wednesday. We're one week away, Kempi. It's crazy. I, I'd have been thinking to myself, um, and I still remember this as a player, right, when there was question marks over guys' fitness. I would always, no matter who it was, I'd always prefer to take the healthy guy. Yeah, okay. Always. Yeah. Um, there's obviously some criteria that, that – they need to tick as far as, you know, like their ability and are they up to playing state of origin. But, you know, guys that are being considered at this level, they've all, they all tick those boxes. But for me, it's about having healthy players mm. because preparation is the most important thing for these games. Yeah. You know, you can't just carry an injured guy, nurse him through, and you come to the end of the week or even close to the game, you don't know whether he's going to stand up in a game. Like how's, yeah. how's that injury going to hold up in a game if he can't train? So there's a there's a yeah a few little question marks flying around um, Nico Hines at the moment. Yeah, it's uh it's a huge question, especially you know if he's put it this way, if he can't train right now, mm. let's say so we're seven days away. Yeah, the intensity of Origin is also much higher than a, a, a club game. Yeah. So I guess the concern would be is that if you're not running yet, how are you going to be able to withstand eighty minutes of the intensity? Yeah. Um, that Origin kind of offers. Yeah. But this, um, look, this, yeah. this this game, like if Nico Hines plays, this is the biggest game of his entire career. Yeah. This is his biggest game of his entire career. Now, I know he was he was in the 17th for the Melbourne Storm in the 2020 Grand Final, but he didn't get on the field. Mm. All right? So he didn't experience the intensity of a Grand Final. He's played about six minutes of an Origin, and he played it out in the centres. Mm. This is a completely different game. Um, situation that he finds himself in now with the number seven on his back, he's the guy that's meant to lead this team around. Mm. Um, and, you know, so like there's, it's, <laughs> as you said, mate, like it's, it's a lot of pressure, not only mentally, but physically, the, the pressure that it puts on your body and the way you're tested and challenged, you know, like just is, is that calf going to hold up? Mm. If, he's, if he's not been able to put time in during the week, is it going to hold up in 80 minutes of origin? Uh, now, another thing, I'd, I'd love to get your thoughts on this, Smithy. It seems like like glaringly obvious the type of footy that Madge is going to play. Yeah. It's going to be big outside backs, and the forwards essentially are resting for line speed in defense. Very mm. similar to the Sharks, very similar to the Penrith Panthers. Penrith Panthers seem to kind of really popularize this kind of game plan. Yep. Um, so, uh, like, I would, 
Honestly, I think that if you find the New South Wales forward pack, I think averaging, they'll, they'll be lucky for them to average over 100 metres each mm. uh, due to the fact that I don't think they're even expected to make over 100 metres because I think the outside backs will be taking so many carries. Mm. Is it is it concerning that it's so obvious as to what... And then, look, maybe it could change. This is just an assumption from mine. Yeah. But it's really obvious the way they're going to play or not really? You can't really stop it if it's good. Well, no, I think I think each team's got their individual game plan and that if, if you're... If you've got a strong belief around what game plan is going to work from you, for you and you're confident in it, it doesn't matter if the opposition know or understand it. Mm. They still they still got to stop it, Kempi. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a perfect example is Penrith. Like yeah. the way the way they play, everyone knows the style of footy that they play. Yep. From week to week, they don't change. They play the same style of footy every single week, but it's so hard to stop because they're so good at it and they believe yeah. in it. Mm. So I think you're right, mate. Like they've got big outside backs who are going to take all the carries out of their own end. You know, the, the, the middle forwards are going to chime in. You know, when the ball gets around halfway, they'll get behind the ball, say, tackle three. They'll have a couple of runs. Haas is the, is the one. Yeah. Like Payne Haas is, is their strike middle forward um, for them. That And, and Spencer Lenu as well. I just don't know how many minutes he'll play. Yep. I, I, I'm thinking he'll come on maybe just before half time. So he can play, say, 10 or 12 minutes before half time. He gets his 15-minute spell at half time because the half times are a little bit longer at Origin compared to NRL. Then he gives it, then he gives Madge another 10 or 12 minutes after half time, and that'll be it for him. Yeah. Right? So so Spencer Lenu and Haas, they're, they're your two sort of – they're your impact forwards where <clears throat> their job is to try and skittle a few defenders, try to create some, some momentum for Hines and Luai – and Reese Robson in the middle. Outside of that, they've got workers, mate. Like Jakey, yeah. Jakey Dravojevic played long minutes. Did he play a whole game the other night against Storm? I think he did. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, like, mate, he had 12 carries for 60-odd metres, which is – he's not bending the line, like with all due respect, but he makes a ton of tackles, yeah. and he'll keep turning up. Robson, same thing. Like, he's pretty sharp out of dummy half, but he's not a known runner. He'll make a lot of tackles. Um, and then you got Yo, same again. Um, so I think they're, they're the two impact players that they do have. What they've got, mate, they've got, they have got a team of workers. Yeah. Right? And, they've, and Madge has picked a side that he knows that these individuals, no matter the situation come next Wednesday night, that they will turn up. Mm. Right? They'll, they'll turn up on – if someone from Queensland's able to make a half break or a line break, there'll be, there'll be blue jerseys chasing back on that, on that player. There'll be blue jerseys diving on loose balls on the ground. You know what I mean? There'll be there'll be blue jerseys chasing chasing down kicks and chasing them hard. That they're the, they're the players that he has picked this year, and he he can rely on and depend on to go and compete on every play.